Welcome everybody to the Sleeper Wire Show. We have very big news for the Sleeper Wire crew this season. Before we jump into that, I am your host, Professor Chris, and with me, I got Sleeper Wire Prophet Hoos. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Back. It's the off season, but we're talking football. It's always exciting. We're talking football, and we're, we're doing things. We're going to be places, and you're, you're going to tell the people. We are going to be places in a <laughs> little, little other piece of information before we uh, get to the big news. Dirty Jobs Mike also on the show. What's going on, dude? Hey, hey, what's happening, man? Very excited. Uh, I'm excited for the big news. I'm excited for everything. I'm in a couple of drafts right now just because I couldn't take oh, it yeah. anymore. I'm just <laughs> loving every minute of it. Yeah, we're we're, we're I'm, I'm in a draft with uh, Dirty Jobs now. We're uh, back and forth. Dude, you're on the clock. Dude, you're right. on the clock. You guys do awesome. Dynasty League? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so awesome to be drafting at this time of the year. Like, I, I don't care. Like, it's you have to be in a dy- at least one dynasty this early, just because it's you know if 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 you're itching like us, you you have you just have to. Like, it's it's the fun. You're drafting. You're picking players. You're digging deeper. It's you're researching right there on the spot. It's awesome. Yes, it is. Well, you know what else is awesome, guys? We are going to be representing hard at the national fantasy football convention in dallas this summer july 12th through 14th we're gonna have a booth set up there with some gear to give away guys this is gonna be awesome yeah a lot of people might not realize this but none of us have ever actually met each other in person and so this will be the first time we actually get to see each other man i'm very excited very excited yeah Yeah. it's got me rocking a 30 percenter just thinking about it (laughs) yeah I'm, I'm going to jiggle that for you when we're at the urinal. I'll, I'll jiggle yours or jiggle mine. And, you know, not longer than two shakes, though, because otherwise it's kind of. It's yeah, yeah. We'll just leave it at that. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but, yeah, we record all of our shows over Skype. We live in different states. It's going to be something, that, like Mike said, the first time we get to meet each other in person. And it's going to be amazing. We're going to be recording a live show. We're going to be doing live drafts, interviewing players, interacting with fans, anybody who comes to see us. Uh, and we're also going to be doing uh, drafts at some after parties, guys. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be special. Special. Who, Mike? I know you guys are going. I'm going to be there, too. Uh, we got some other Sleeper Wire guys going. Primetime Lucas. You met him on the Thursday show and Mail Sack every week last week. Uh, George and Jason from Break from the Gut Grind. And uh, Adam, our head honcho here at Sleeper Wire. And our soon-to-be-more well-known Corey, and maybe even some other guys as well. This is going to be amazing, and I am super pumped for this. We're, you know, it's February, and we're already like, all right, what Airbnb do we want? <laughs> it's July. You know, we're pumped. We're hoping to see some of you guys there too. It's going to be some awesome drafts. We're going to be a part of. We're going to be raffling off stuff. So much prizes. So much awesome stuff. It, it's we, we can't wait. You hear the excitement, and we're you know, entering March. Yes, uh, tweet us at NFFC Sleeper Wire if you are going to, or just hashtag that, tweet it at us if you're going to be there in person and uh, come see us. All right, well, guys, we're going to be talking about free agents on this show and also a little bit of news. You guys ready to jump in? I do. Absolutely. All right, kicking off some news here. Some of it's a little old because it's been a couple weeks since our last show, but my favorite story of the offseason so far. <laughs> Robert Kraft has officially been charged with soliciting prostitution, and this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. It's hilarious. Let me quickly before you know what the the real story is hideous. We're we're laughing about Robert Kraft, you know, being associated Patriots. All these guys being associated with this. Obviously, the backstory. Um, prostitution rings we that's not funny we're not yeah, laughing. yeah we're not laughing about that <laughs> we're, we're laughing funny. about robert Kraft. yeah <laughs> thank you for good. clarifying <laughs> yeah it's good times <laughs> yeah this i i can't wait to see what's gonna happen but it's gonna be interesting uh for Kraft and his best buddy goodell as to what their conversation is gonna go like with uh can you suspend an owner <laughs> i guess you can i wasn't jim Irsay suspended for a few games from uh, lucas so. oil yeah, I believe so. Yeah, well, yeah, this this that was a great headline when that came across the sleeper. <laughs> and the internet was just the internet remains undefeated, right? Let's let's get it clear. And the memes that came out, the 
it's it was so fun. It was a fun day of um, non non news, non you know nothing. It was just a fun day. The internet remains just amazing. The memes that come out, all the, it was so many amazing ones. I don't know if you guys saw as as many as I did, but did you I was see just... the one of Brady photoshopped as a blonde woman. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I was <laughs> just getting ready to bring that up. Good ones out there, and some good people like. Uh, remaking videos on um, I saw on 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 Instagram. I think it was this guy uh, Jacob, the actor. Um, he he had a couple of videos. It, uh, he was playing Robert Kraft, and he had some probably looked like some strippers of some sort. Some very attractive women were were, were in the video. Uh, Jacob, the actor. If you want to go to IG, it was hilarious. He, he, he's not paying us for that, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll send him an invoice. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you guys have probably heard that by now. You're keeping up with that story. It's going to be all over the news. Uh, I just want to bring that up because I think it's awesome. It is. <laughs> uh, we got a couple players who are not going to be back with their respective teams next season. Michael Crabtree was released by the Ravens. Uh, we're, as we're going to talk about here in a little bit, John Brown is also a free agent. So the Ravens are going to be one of those teams that are going to need some wide receiver help. Jaguars are likely to release Carlos Hyde and also Corey Grant and TJ Yeldon are both free agents. So uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Leonard Fournette. There is a rumor that Le'Veon Bell is now 260 pounds. Now, Mike, NFL.com has him at 225. If he gained 35 pounds, if that's legit, what round are you going to take him in? I mean, just hauntings of Eddie Lacy keep happening in my head, right? <laughs> like, I'm like, is, is he the next Cheeseburger Lacy that's coming out here? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, you can almost hear the guy walking in the locker room. If that's true, I'm probably going to try to avoid him. I mean, sixth round or later, but there's no way he's going to last that long. So he's not going to be in your team, basically. He's going to be yeah. signed as a linebacker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> IDP leagues, look out. <laughs> hey, hey, there's some guys that are retiring this year, so, hey, it might be an opening. No, but there was a, a report, I believe, I think it's eight. I mean, obviously it was his agent. Um, <laughs> but it said, came out, I was like, no, he's not 260. Um, I haven't seen any he's pictures. Yet. Yeah, he's 250. Yeah, he, he's hovering. You know, he's not <laughs> quite 260. But, yeah, there was some, some rumors about that. Um, the agent came out and said that the, he's he's fine. He's not overweight. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the guy obviously gained at least a noticeable. What's what's a noticeable weight? Like twenty pounds? Would you say? I would say with fifteen, you get like a little bit around your chin. Yeah, like a little so, bit more in your face. So he put on at least fifteen pounds. <laughs> yeah. So if he's two twenty five normally, is that how he walks around? So he's two forty right now. At least. At least. <laughs> At least. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, not great. Bell. Not yeah. great. He ate himself out of all that guaranteed money. I Jeez. saw that. I saw that late Taco <laughs> Bell. Uh, that one cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's good. I hadn't heard that one. Uh, let's move to our last piece of news here. Terrence Williams is no longer going to be vulturing wide receiver touchdowns in Dallas. The Cowboys declined his option, and he is going to be an unrestricted free agent. Maybe he'll be at the NFFC, and uh, we can get a, an exclusive <laughs> Terrence Williams interview. Hard to pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for the brief news. Let's talk about some free agents. So this is our free agent, uh, impending free agent show. So we're going to talk about some of the more fantasy relevant players who could be moving teams this season. Now keep in mind they could sign back where they were, but they could be moving teams. So we're going to start with quarterbacks. So I went through, found a list of all the teams that might be, you know, needy at the quarterback position. The first was the Carolina Panthers, and that's if Cam isn't totally healthy and ready to return. The Cincinnati Bengals, Andy Dalton can be cut with no penalty to them. Uh, we also got the Broncos because we know Case Keenum is not the answer, right, Mike? But Joe Flacco <laughs> is. <So boom. laughs> but Joe, I completely forgot about Joe Flacco. Lindsay OK uh, agrees with that. She just let me. She just tweeted out that um, she's a she's a Broncos fan, and I tweeted back. I was like, I didn't realize Flacco had the LeBron effect, but um, okay, <laughs> whatever. Whatever, you both. 
let me remove the Denver Broncos from this list because they're clearly set at quarterback for life. <laughs> right. But they're right. Kind of black, but solid as a rock. Right. Play, man. Think of all guy, those huge passing years. Good evaluating quarterback. You yeah. got to give them that, right? <laughs> that Elway. Oh, man. And we also got the Jaguars, the Dolphins, and the Redskins. There's really only four starter worthy names that for free agent quarterbacks this offseason. And the big one, of course, is Nick Foles. He took that big money buyout from the Eagles, he bought his free agency. So he could go somewhere and be a starter. We also got Tyrod Taylor, Josh McCown, and Teddy Bridgewater. So, guys, I'm going to kick this one off here. Where would you like to see Nick Foles go? Personally, I would like to see him in Arizona. I do not think Josh Rosen is the answer for them at all. He didn't look good, really, at any point in the season last year. They need some veteran leadership there at the quarterback position. Not veteran leadership just from Larry Fitzgerald, but from the QB as well. And I think Nick Foles could be a nice fit in Arizona. What about you guys? Well, I think, uh, I think I'd like to see him in Cincinnati, um, just with the weapons that are on that team. I think a guy like Nick Foles could go in there and just hammer it out. I mean, just be huge. You got AJ Green, Joe Mixon. Uh, I guess they don't really have the tight end position sealed down yet, but then, uh, Boyd, I mean, they just, they have a really good stack of weapons over there in Cincinnati. I think he'd be a good fit there. You mean CJ Uzuma is no Zach? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe not, maybe not last year. Maybe that was more of the Andy Dalton, uh, Andy Dalton attributing to that. But I feel like, uh, I feel like Nick Foles would actually do really well there. Who's where'd you like Foles to go? I think the most necessary place the most glaring weakness who has no quarterback and there's they got Colt McCoy and Josh Johnson back there. They had it's the Redskins. I mean, who are, who are they going to sign if it's not Kaepernick or if it's not Foles? I mean, uh, it won't be Kaepernick. It won't be Kaepernick because it's Redskins Kaepernick. Obviously it won't be that. That's, that's terrible. Could um, you imagine? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be too bad. Like that'd be probably the worst place he could sign. But they need a quarterback, though. They do need a quarterback. Um, I would say Foles would be the best spot there. Uh, they have nothing. They're going to have to draft a guy. They're not going to rely on a, on a rookie. Um, there's just not many options available. I know they were talk that they might bring back Josh Johnson. He had one good game. I think week uh, 14 or week 15. He served up a stinker the following game, so he didn't do anything. He looked better than Colt McCoy, but he's 30, I believe 30, 31. So not that, you know, Foles is a spring chicken, but yeah, Foles he's won a Super Bowl. You know? Super he's Bowl the- MVP Nick Foles. You watch your mouth when you're yes. talking about him. <laughs> big, uh, you know, big, big uh, penis. Uh, BDN. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's serviceable. I think he'd be a good fit in, in the Redskins. Um. They need the quarterback bad, so I think that would be the biggest uh, for them to just go in there and just be an option right off the back. They yeah, and there's, there's no guarantee Alex Smith plays this year, or yeah. ever again. No, yeah. unfortunately. Could you guys see Tyrod Taylor, Josh McCown, or Teddy Bridgewater starting for any teams? I could maybe see Tyrod starting for Jacksonville or Miami. I believe Miami's it's the so Dolphins' tough. turn to have Josh McCown. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think they're up on the list. <laughs> so, they've they've been waiting in queue and um, very patiently. Uh, yes, it's it's. I'm agreeing with Dirty Jobs. It's it, it's their turn. Yeah. All right, let's move to running backs. We uh, compiled this list of running back needy teams here. Before I go through the players, I'll read the team. So we've got the Atlanta Falcons for insurance in case Devonta Freeman gets injured. Tevin Coleman is a free agent. He's probably going to leave. Maybe he gets a bigger contract. Maybe he gets to start somewhere in case Freeman gets injured. Uh, The Baltimore Ravens, Buffalo Bills, Houston Texans, Miami Dolphins, New York Jets, Oakland Raiders, Philadelphia Eagles, Seattle Seahawks, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Washington Redskins. (laughs) (laughs) Love that. Love that. Uh, A lot of teams. Yeah, a lot of teams could use a running back, and we got actually a pretty good list of free agent running backs. Of course, the big one, Le'Veon Bell, Mr. uh, Well, it's not Cheeseburger, because that's Eddie Lacy. uh, (laughs) Mr. uh, Mr. Chili Cheese Dog. Let's just go with that. Chili Cheese Dog. That's a good one. Mr. Cake. (laughs) Mr. Cake. (laughs) All all apply. 
Uh, Le'Veon Bell, Mark Ingram, Tevin Coleman, as I mentioned, Adrian Peterson, CJ Anderson, the Ravens running backs, Gus Edwards and Alex Collins are both free agents. Marshawn Lynch, Latavius Murray, Spencer Ware, TJ Yeldon, Doug Martin, LeGarrette Blunt, and Mike Davis. Mm. So we already talked a little about a little bit about Le'Veon Bell. Guys, just give me a quick team. Not really much of an explanation. Where do you think he will go? I'm gonna say Jets. Jets. Yeah, Jets have the money. I think Jets will pay him. I would say Raiders would be my second call. Mark Ingram. They need they need a guy. So yeah, I I like it. Yeah, they do. I mean, they're losing Marshawn Lynch and the great Doug Martin. <laughs> J- yeah. Jalen Richard's their best running back right now. So he is. I mean, I love him. You you guys know that. John uh, John Gruden loves those old school type players. You think Bell or Ingram in Oakland? I like it. Maybe um, AP. Ingram. Uh, AP, I think, has to retire this year. Even though he he looked good well, when he did get the ball, um, thousand yard season, just, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he was he was solid. He was a top running back for you. He just wasn't consistent. Obviously, he couldn't stay healthy all year. Um, Redskin problems, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, I I like um, I like that. I, I I think Mark Ingram could be a good fit for the Raiders. I think he fits that ground and pound. Um style that they like to use uh, but he's Mark also Jones. great with his hands and Carr throws to Jalen yeah. Richard who in pass catching is his specialty and I think he Jalen Richard could learn a ton from Mark Ingram I think he'd love it I, I know Kamara already came out and said um bring this guy back with the clap emojis you know those clap emojis where yeah it's like this the J- guy the Jason <laughs> yeah yeah so um he wants him back obviously but he's gonna get paid elsewhere um I love Mark Ingram. Love that type of chipper shoulder guy. He comes in, proves it every year. And believe it or not, I know he didn't put out the year that we expected him to, but missing four games and, you know, having that bye week early, he still was a uh, um, uh, a running back three for you. I mean, it's not exciting, but obviously there was a couple things that could have changed that. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, let's talk about this next guy, CJ Anderson. And before we pick a landing spot for him or where we want him to go, guys, I, I got to say I'm a little uh, little irritated about there's other analysts who have been on record as saying, oh, his career is over. He sucks. He, he just got cut by the Panthers. Like, he's going to retire. He's not worth anything. And now they are singing his freaking praises. <laughs> Well, I'm not just, hopping just on ridiculous. Board with that. Yeah, I'm not hopping on board. Oh, with you that. Mean, wait, 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 wait. He was good, huh? I wasn't <laughs> wrong. I didn't say that. <laughs> no. T.J. Anderson, man, he's the guy's. He's young. He's 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 not that old. You know, he's he's really not. I'm saying C.J. Anderson. He's what twenty seven. Oh. C.J. Anderson of the Chiefs. They need something. Spencer Ware and Shark Hendrick West are free agents. Damian Williams is not the uh, the only answer there. I think C.J. Anderson would be a great fit. Yeah, yeah it, it could be a good spot. What are you thinking, Dirty? I think that if you want your Kansas City Chiefs to fail, you'll sign C.J. Anderson. That guy looked oh, good. Oh, man, that just sounds a like a bitter. You're so fan. bitter. I did, I'm, so I, bitter I, I'm still bro. right about that guy all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, the guy can light it up know. the last couple of weeks of the season and leave you with a good feeling in your belly about him. But you just don't, you got to look at him week to week to week to week. And this guy is just not good. I mean, he's not consistent. All right. I just, oh, come on. <laughs> you're, you're bitter, bro. Like, I come am on. very bitter. I hate CJ Anderson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 that's all we needed to hear. Oh, that's great. <laughs> it, so many teams are coveting this guy. I think, I don't know, like, you got to sell these teams, like, not to spend so much money. On C.J. Anderson, because I think he's going to command at least, not a lot, but at least five mil. Total yeah. or per season? Per season, I would say. Yeah, he, he yeah, definitely earned that it. money at the end. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, maybe some teams will look at that and be like, well, look at well, how well he did under pressure in the playoffs. Fresh lights. Yeah. I don't know. Fresh lights. Let's move on here. Uh, Mike, pick a landing spot for Gus Edwards. I think Gus Edwards, I mean... You're going to see him be probably more of a utility back somewhere. Uh, he's probably not going to go in and get the starting role. I could actually see somebody like the Saints picking him up just because of his north-south running style. 
A guy can't, I mean, he, if he can catch a pass, he didn't show that he could catch a pass. And you got Kamara already there. So this guy, I was thinking he could easily become a saint. I think that they, uh, I, I just feel like he kind of fits their style. I think he goes back to the Ravens. What about you, Hoos? Yeah, I agree with that. I think he, I think he, he filled a need. He filled a void. I think him and Kenneth Dixon played a good complement to each other. Um, I think they have to retain him at this point. They have nothing else. Do you see them re-signing Alex Collins? I don't. No. Um, Alex Collins may have looked better just behind that line. Um, In 2017. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> yeah, 2017. <laughs> I, I mean, he obviously was terrible last year. I was so high on Collins last year. I drafted him, I think, uh, as high as the fourth round. I know. You um, talked me into him. Yeah, sorry about Jake. that, bro. Sheesh, <laughs> uh, I even had Draft Genius um, give me a, I think he gave me a third round pick for Collins in a, in a dynasty, so I'm pretty stoked about that one. Uh, <laughs> he liked him as well. He liked him as well. Uh, but yeah, Alex Collins, he's got to end up somewhere, but I don't see him being, and it, 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 it's, it's strange because I once said Alex Collins has this Marshawn Lynch esque kind of vibe to him, you know, impact to him. Uh, maybe he just needs another team to believe in him. So I don't see him coming back to the Ravens, though. No. I think Gus has words, does re up as a Raven, though. Marshawn Lynch. Is he done, or uh, you think he's going to sign somewhere? Sign for some Skittles. You know what? Lynch, so- Lynch is going to sign in Detroit and take the LeGarrette Blunt role. <laughs> Be vulturing all those carry on Johnson touchdowns. I feel like Man, what he uh, did Oakland. was more of an Oakland based thing. Like, I think he wanted to go back and just play for he Oakland. Did. So, I feel like if he does go back anywhere, he might go back to Oakland. I mean, he didn't do bad last year, he just got hurt halfway through. I mean, but no, he, was a, he was pretty good. Yeah, there was a minute there where he was the number one back. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he was for like for like one half of football, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, a minute, yeah. a whole entire minute. But no, he looked amazing, though, right? Like, I mean, we looked at him some, at, even in preseason games, right? Like, I remember some of those preseason games. Where I was like, "Wow, Marshawn's gonna be a thing this year, possibly." And yeah. I mean, and he I was mean, a few games in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just didn't use him as much. Also, I don't think, like, even when they he looked so good. They didn't give him the, the rock enough. They just For didn't. Sure. I sure. mean, maybe they thought he was going to get injured, and he did get injured. So, All right, guys, let's talk about one more running back here. We're not going to get through the whole list. TJ Yeldon, where would you like to see him go, Mike? TJ Yeldon, though. See, that's a guy that I can see totally fitting into Baltimore's type scheme, uh, especially with Lamar Jackson at the helm over there. You know, a good pass-catching back that's really fast out of the backfield. Um, that's why... Like, I, I don't really feel like they'll go back with Gus Edwards, and I, I can totally see them going for somebody, say, like Tevin Coleman or TJ Yeldon, one of those really good pass-catching backs. I'm saying Yeldon to the Texans. Ooh, that would be a good move, too. I like it. I like it. Um, what about you? Gonna, uh, I'm going to say Atlanta. They have nothing. That's a great spot. Other than Brian Hill, who, who Dirty Jobs loves. I love Brian Hill. <laughs> <laughs> love Brian Hill. Don't forget Edo Smith. And Edo Smith. They have the judge. They have him. Um, Freeman. We're going to see. we, we got to see with Freeman. Freeman could be a complete steal, but at this point, he hasn't been healthy. So I think uh, Yeldon would be, a, that'd be an amazing spot from uh down in atlanta yep all right guys you ready to move on to wide receivers yes, sir. let's do it all right well we have a bunch of wide receiver needy teams here and really just because teams need more than two so i'm gonna try to get through these ones i try to keep up guys cardinals of course baltimore ravens they are losing crabtree and john brown the Buffalo Bills, Carolina Panthers are losing Devin Funches to a free agency. Dallas Cowboys, Cole Beasley is a free agent, and Terrence Williams was declined on that option. Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, Randall Cobb, and Geronimo Allison are both free agents. Uh, the Colts, it is just T.Y. Hilton there. Miami Dolphins, Jets, Raiders, Steelers, because they're trading Antonio Brown, 49ers, Titans, and Redskins. 
So let's go through, through this list. And I actually really like this wide receiver free agent class. I think it's got a lot of potential talent in it. And the best one clearly is Golden Tate. Now, I know I'm going to be biased and say I want the Colts to take almost every single one of these guys. So I'm going to try to be a little realistic. <laughs> well, you only have Hilton. Uh, I know, man. only have Hilton. You know what? Give me uh, Golden Tate and Robbie Anderson. Oh, Oof. <laughs> no, man. You, you can't yeah. have Robbie. You can't have Robbie. The Jets need to retain this guy. He's the best receiver they've had for some time. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Let's talk Golden Tate, though. Let's do it. Mike, give me a landing spot. I mean, I, I feel like I'm with you. Like, as far as like being a homer, I'm like, well, how about Denver? Because <laughs> you got that fresh yeah. arm of Joe Flacco going. But no, really, I mean, honestly, to the Colts, I think Golden Tate would be a perfect accent to T.Y. Hilton, honestly. I mean, that guy, the, as quick as he is, you're going to have a lot of tough times trying to create ways to cover both him and T.Y. Hilton who can just burn you and run down that straight seam. So I really feel like Golden Tate to the, the Colts would probably be his best landing spot. Yeah, and he would be that kind of uh, over-the-middle receiver that Dante Moncrief was for Andrew Luck, but way better. So on third downs, Golden Tate could be huge for that offense. Absolutely. Yep. Jim yeah. Ursay, we know you're listening, right? <laughs> <laughs> we know we know you're tuned in. Get Golden Tate to Indiana. Get him on the team. Yep. Uh, Get him I ready. love that. I love that take. Uh if I could throw another team in there, uh if I could throw another team, I'm gonna say the Jets need receivers as well. He's he's a nice blanket. I do love Golden Tate and the Colts, but I didn't I, I didn't want to pick him just because we're all agreeing here. I think he's a, a perfect fit um, for, for that offense. Uh, but there's a lot of teams that need help. I could see the Jets using him. I could see the Titans needing him as well. Well, I mean, they I like that Jets of, pick. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't really – I don't think they're going to get Antonio Brown. Well, uh, they're losing Jermaine Curse, who was their PPR guy. Exactly. I mean, yeah. him and uh, – well, yeah, he he was really their PPR guy. There yeah. was really no one else that you can count on. Golden Tate would be an amazing option across from uh, Robbie Anderson. I think they have to bring him back. Well, I mean, he would, he would be an okay option. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he'd be amazing. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, opposite Robbie Anderson. He'd be amazing for Darnold. For Darnold, as a nice security blanket. Because right now, I mean, he has Herndon, who's a nice tight end. He surprises us a lot. I think he's that nice security blanket for him now. But give him two of those guys that will be able to, to catch the ball and move a yard or two afterwards. That's huge, you know. And uh, then you set up the run afterwards. So uh, the Jets are a nice landing spot for him. But yeah, I definitely agree with you guys. The uh, Colts, I think, put him on the Colts. Uh, opposite Ty, that's huge. No, I think I the only guy they do team. have. Um, <laughs> I think the guy only guys you do guys have um lined up. You guys obviously have Deion Kane, Doris Fountain. And I believe Zach Pascal is also signed another year with you guys. So uh, not Pascal's close. a free agent too. Oh, is he? So yeah. yeah. And Ryan Grant and Chester Rogers. Yeah. So I mean, Ryan Grant. You guys brought Ryan Grant in to be what I think Golden Tate truly can be. Um, so uh, it that would be my landing spot. But aside from that, the Jets. You know what? The Colts have what maybe the most cap room. They can easily get two of these guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know who else you want other I mean, than Tate and John Anderson. Brown, Tate and Robbie Anderson. Anderson. It's not the sexiest wide receiver year. Maybe Tate There's really Crabtree. no. Yeah. Do you want Crabtree? I, I wouldn't. I'd take a year or two of Crabtree on the Colts. I mean, you did good with Inman, so you get Crabtree, I guess. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, I mean, it, it was all right. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was obviously your second best receiver. Yeah, maybe. Maybe? <laughs> I mean, I would say Chester Rogers was the second best. Really? I agree with that yeah. Too. yeah. I think Chester but... Rogers was by far the second best there. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Inman down the stretch was reliable and he was the guy that. Rogers was more consistent all season. Right. As long as we Anyways, can be we're spending way too much talking, time talking about wide receiver eights. <laughs> oh, cool. It, it Colts. <laughs> I thought you were gonna to say too much time talking about Colts. I'm like, wait, no, no, no. We can just actually turn this into the Sleeper Wire Colts podcast if you guys want to. <laughs> no, uh, let's move on. 
Mike, Broncos fan, former Bronco Demarius Thomas, n- may not be returning to Houston. He's a free agent. Where would you like to see DT go? You know, I, I feel like Houston would be about the best landing spot. I think him and Nuke were starting to really get things going, and then you got Kiki in the in the slot, and I think that'd be a damaging team right there. I I could see him going back to Houston. Uh, another but good team, let me ask you this. Do okay. you think Demarius Thomas is better than Kiki or Will Fuller? I do think he's better than Will Fuller. I, I, I think it's a different dynamic that they bring to the table with Kiki QT. I think he's bigger. Uh, I think he's got the better hands. I think he's a better guy in the red zone. But I think he'll like to say third downs like we were just talking about. I think I'd rather have Kiki there. Uh, another really good place for him would be Baltimore. I think he's a big standout number one receiver. You can go somewhere yep. and be that guy. And I think Baltimore would be a good place. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I love that. Um, I would say him there or either just a veteran presence for the Steelers with um, AB gone. I think he'd be a good fit there. Now, this is all bearing he's okay from that car accident he had. So, Godspeed to that, man. I I haven't heard too many uh, details about that, but I know he was in a rollover accident. Um, The car rolled over. Hopefully, he's okay. I didn't hear too many details about it, but that did Let, happen to Mary Thomas a couple weeks ago. So let's assume he's okay because we haven't heard anything bad. Right. Um, so I think that would be a good lance, but I wouldn't even be uh, too surprised if you've seen him back uh, in Denver. Oh, huh, interesting. Well, you're talking about veteran presence for a team. Uh, I actually think Cowboys might be a good fit. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I like Mark it. Cooper, Demarius Thomas, Staying in the state. John Brown and Michael Crabtree, both free agents. I would assume both of them are leaving the Ravens. John Brown of the Colts, I would love that. And I'm just yeah, let's, let's stop, <laughs> stop with that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take both guys here. I'm gonna say John Brown to the Carolina Panthers. I like that. And like. Michael Crabtree signs a near minimum deal with the Bills. I like that as well. Ah, oh, that that pulls on my Josh Allen heartstrings. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I dig it, though. I, I really do. Those are great landing spots for both those guys. Mike, why don't you give me a landing spot for each one? Feel free to say Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think with Kenny Stills on the fence right now and everything, I could see John Brown Ooh. going to Miami and fitting in there. They're going to need a speedster with him gone. Michael Crabtree, I mean, like that guy is just so good. I, I mean, I really can honestly see him possibly going back to San Francisco because – I think he really liked that area down there. I thought I read something about him saying I thought that too. About yeah. him going back and so I mean they want to load up on wide receivers down there and I could see him possibly taking a pretty low deal, but I'd I'd love to see him in Buffalo. That'd be another great spot. Yeah, that's an amazing spot for him. That I mean are the are the Oakland Raiders bring you back Jordy? I think maybe he go back to car. That might be a good spot for them as well. I did not see Jordy on the free agent list. Maybe I just overlooked his name. Or maybe I didn't scroll down far enough. <laughs> I mean, it's possible they gave him a couple-year deal. I wouldn't think so at his age, but it's possible. Let me look at that. Jordy Nelson contract. It was a two-year, 15... Guaranteed $13 million, two-year, $15 million contract. Okay, so yes, yeah, two years. years. Read up. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right, let's move on. Uh, New England Patriots wide receiver Chris Hogan going to be a free agent. Honestly, I think he goes back to New England. I don't think he leaves for money. Well, I mean, how can he? He had a terrible season. I drafted the guy was so high on Chris Hogan, so high on Chris Hogan last year. It was insane. Like, I believed in him so much. I think I drafted him as early as a fifth round in a lot of leagues. Wow. A lot of leagues. Um, wow. Yeah, he yeah. was just terrible for you, though. I And I believe, like, wholeheartedly, I was like, this guy is going to be the guy. Like, he the, <laughs> the year he ended, um, there's no one there. Uh, I, I just believed in him so much, and he let me down probably the, the most out of any player last year. I had him on so many teams, and I – don't know why I bought into him so hard and like every I feel like I had him on every team and yeah so so I feel it the most Chris Hogan has to re-up 
there because I don't think any other team really wants him. I mean, he wants another asterisk. The Bills? The Bills? Does he end up back with the Bills? No way. Maybe they realize they missed out on something mediocre? Nah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I I mean, that's the only thing I could think Uh, of. Mike, you got a landing spot for Chris Hogan? I I really don't. I can't disagree that he might go back to the Patriots. I, I don't see a lot of teams getting a lot of interest for him, though. All right, let's move on here. Tyrell Williams, a definite deep uh, deep ball, big play guy. I'm going to go out on the leap here, and I'm going to say Tyrell Williams to the Miami Dolphins. Wow. They need someone like that. Yeah. Of course, they need a quarterback who can throw it far, but <laughs> they also need a wide receiver who can catch it. <laughs> Mike, why don't you give me a lady spot for Tyrell? Um, I actually I can see him going back to Los Angeles Chargers. I think uh, I think he fit in with Philip Rivers. I think they're really going to try to make a run for it this year. Philip Rivers is only getting older, so I feel like they're going to try to move and try to get him back. Who's what about you, Tyrell? Yeah, I mean I could see him reading him up there. The only other spot I can think possibly the Lions doesn't have too many receivers. They were decimated last year. Armin Jones didn't seem to be the answer. Yeah, and then um, they traded Tate. They traded Tate, which was terrible. Yeah, um, that was horrible for Matthew Stafford, too. Yeah. Uh, he it, became he droppable just, immediately. Oh God, it was... It, there's never been... I want to say... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, listeners or whoever. You know, there's never been a player removed from a quarterback situation, and he just nosedived so badly like it's like he made the quarterback almost yeah it was bad it was bad which is weird because matthew stafford has historically been pretty good for fantasy but he was i dropped him last year that's how bad he was he was droppable yeah um, i i know we did a show and we were talking about you drop him or you're picking him up and i was like heck yeah i'm picking up i mean how do you not how do you leave stafford on, on the waivers yeah you know, that was you gotta a- pick that was uh, with uh, you, Lucas, and me with Mike producing, and you and I are both on the same side. If he's dropped, I'm picking him up. You know, yeah, someone I'm else making... drops him, I'm grabbing him. And Lucas was like, "Nope, I'm dropping him." <laughs> Man, I, it, that was just crazy to see. I mean, I believe in Stafford. I think he's a quarterback that can get you through. I think you needed another quarterback with him. He's not the quarterback that's going to win you a championship ever. But I believe he is a good quarterback to have on your team. Maybe he bounce back. He needs weapons. Um, and maybe Tyrell Williams is a good fit there. Um, obviously, he, he doesn't fit that same Golden Tate mold. Uh, but there's really no one on this list that does, aside from possibly Humphreys, which we'll get to, obviously. And uh, I'm probably just going to, disclaimer, say the lines there. So you can skip over right. me once we get to Humphreys. <laughs> All right. So well, let's, let's go ahead and skip down to that. So who says Adam Humphreys to the Lions? I was thinking about this earlier. I, I don't have a rationale behind this. I don't have a, and this is why it makes sense. For some reason, I see Adam Humphreys to the Titans. I don't know why, but I see him in Tennessee. Huh. Be Mike, what about you? Where could you see Humphreys going? That'd be a good fit, Tennessee. I think that'd be a good one. But I think, uh, I think probably this guy is going to be more of a northbound team, like the Ravens or the Bills, somewhere like that. He's just proved that he's so important, so good. Like I don't know. I think he's going to be a vital. I think he's going to try to get signed up as a one somewhere. He was super vital. Uh, obviously, Mike, you owned him in a couple leagues, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Down the stretch. Wow. Yeah, at the he, end of the he, year. He, he was, was a top 12 wrong. guy. Yeah, He was a top 12 guy down the stretch. For like three or, or four weeks straight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we don't have really too many wide receivers left. Uh, Devin Funches, we already talked about Robbie Anderson, Cole Beasley, Randall Cobb, Pierre Garçon, Dante Moncrief. Uh, I want you each pick one of those guys and give me a landing spot. Who's pick a guy and a landing spot. Uh, this is an ugly list. Uh, I'm going to say Randall Cobb re-ups for veteranship. Um, it's not really picking a different team, Green Bay. He, he just gets back there uh, as a presence. 
He's not going to be the guy anymore. They have way, way too many wide receiver options. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd like him to just return back as the guy that uh, Rodgers is familiar with in the locker room, at least. You know, based off of what they did last year, they let uh, you know, they they they, they let the number one guy go, and who knows how it affected Rodgers throughout the year. Um, he just was not the number one quarterback anymore. Um, I don't want to say if it was strictly Rod, uh, Jordy, but I think they bring Randall Cobb back just as a presence, a veteranship. Yeah. They have a bunch of young guys there, and he he, he kind of needs to come back. I feel. Thanks for making that brief. <laughs> you can count on me anytime. oh i knew i knew as soon as i kicked it to you i was like gosh ah, shit it's gonna take forever anytime. Anytime, brother. <laughs> i'm gonna say cole beasley becomes ben roethlisberger's slot receiver in pittsburgh mike what about you give me a name and a team i was actually gonna say cole beasley to the broncos because that guy just he's got the broncos mentality i like his style he reminds me of Eddie McCaffrey back in his day. So I'd like to see Cole Beasley to the Broncos. Love it. Hate the quarterback situation, but love it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Beasley to the Patriots? Ugh. You know what? I could definitely easily see that happening. Yeah. If he does, Beasley's going to be better than Julian Edelman. Book it. Ooh. Ooh. If it happens. If it I happens. can see it. I can see it. I can see it. You heard it here first. As long as they have Edelman, though, Beasley's not going there. No. Right. Nope. All right, guys. Let's move on to the last position here, tight ends. We've got a bunch of tight end needy teams, which we could probably guess due to playing fantasy football and knowing how horrible the position really is. Cardinals, they're losing Ricky Seals-Jones, most likely. He's a free agent. Buffalo Bills, Carolina Panthers, Cincinnati Bengals, because Eifert and Croft are free agents. Broncos, Lions, Texans, Jaguars, Dolphins, Saints, Raiders, because Jared Cook's a free agent. Tennessee Titans, because uh, Delaney Walker, maybe. And the Washington Redskins. If we look at this, I think the uh, Redskins are on every single list. <laughs> for... They need options. <laughs> they, they need one of every single position. The Dolphins might be there as well. But let's go ahead and talk about the Bengals losing their tight ends. Tyler Eifert and Tyler Croft, both free agents. I don't see them bringing back Tyler Eifert. I would not be surprised if they re-signed Tyler Croft, though. Yeah, I yeah, can see I him. can see it. I can see him re-signing Croft. I think uh, right when you said Eifert, he probably hurt his knee, so he's probably going to be on the <laughs> IR to start out the season, anyways. Jesus. Yeah, no kidding, <laughs> no kidding. Well, let's talk about the big name of this list: the guy who was a tight end one last season, Jared Cook, free agent. Do you think he goes back to the Oakland Raiders, or do you think he goes somewhere else, Zeus? He has to end up back at the Raiders. He's never been as important as a tight end as 100%. he's been with the Raiders. 100%. Yeah, I could see him going back to the Raiders. I think Gruden probably liked what he saw out of him. I think he'll probably pay Jared Cook. Yeah, and at this point in Cook's career, I mean, obviously he would like to win a championship, but... I don't see any championship contenders that are going to want to sign him at his age for what he's probably going to want in free agency. So I think this is going to be a money move, and I don't see him leaving. I think he's going to be the Raider. The only other place I could possibly see him is possibly the Bills. I know they they let go of the Charles Clay project. Um, Didn't they bring him back for one year? I believe they let go of him, but maybe I'm I read wrong. No, you're I mean, right. He's, he's no longer a bill. Yeah, I, I thought I thought I saw that. Kroom, I thought I saw it. They, they is weren't bringing the, it back. No, oh, he he one. signed a deal with the Cardinals. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So speaking of Cardinals, we were talking about Cardinals previously with Ricky yeah. Jones. That's why he's no longer going to be a thing, apparently. Um. Well, and also he's a free agent. There's no reason for them to bring him back. They brought. You know, they're bringing that guy in. So, yeah. Do you see? I mean, I think most, if not all, of these guys are going to get jobs. Who's the best, Mike, out of Ricky Seals Jones? We also have Deion Sims, Austin Safarian Jenkins, Benjamin Watson, and Antonio Gates. Who's the best out of that five? I mean, it's got to be Ricky Seals Jones, right? He's the guy that has the youth. Everybody else that you're saying, man, they're they're like vets, like seven plus years on a lot of these guys. So, 
and Antonio Gates, I just can't imagine he's coming back. I, I would have to say Watson's thirty eight. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. these guys are way old as far as football numbers go. But I would say Ricky Seals Jones. He's probably going to be the guy that can be a game changing dynamic for uh, whatever team picks him up. Yeah, RSJ to the Lions. <laughs> RSJ to the Lions would be. Uh, I I don't like the Lions tight end ever, but. I mean, will we see how badly they did with Ebron and how great other teams, well, the Colts did with them. So mm. they, they're very bad at that. Right. I do like Deion Sims. I do as well. I, yeah. I like Sims, but I think I agree with uh, Dirty Jobs. Ricky Tills Jones is probably the, <laughs> I don't want to say the sexiest name because this, this list is not sexy. Yeah, this, this whole free not- agent list is. There's no good free agents, really. I don't want to say there's no good. I, I don't want to short these guys, right? But other than Bell, Ingram, Tate. Um, it's a wide receiver 2-3, running back 2-3 kind yeah, of free agency. Right, right. I think Robbie Anderson's probably the... Robbie Anderson and Bell are probably the most sexiest players. Yeah, I would agree. All right. Oh, well, guys, I don't think we need to talk too much about tight ends and <laughs> shitty teams. <laughs> I realize it doesn't help us much. No. Oh, all right. Well, guys, that's it for our impending free agent show. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Before we close out, this is something that I do not do enough. I want to encourage all of you to go check out the other shows in the Sleeper Wire Network. Break from the Grind with George and Jason. You've heard them on the Sleeper Wire show. And the Dynasty Wire show with Draft Genius. You've heard JM on this show before as well. I do not plug these guys enough. We don't talk about them enough. We are super lucky to have them as part of the Sleeper Wire team. Mike, who's I know last season when we were talking like, oh, man, we I think we need more hosts. We need more consistency. (laughs) People who are going to do this. And I brought up. Why don't we see if the yeah. break from the grind guys want to yeah. want to yep. join Sleeper Wire? And everybody was like, "Hell Perfect. yes!" Perfect. Like there was really Perfect. no discussion. And these guys have been great additions. And Draft Genius been a great addition as well. We're so glad to have them as part of the Sleeper Wire team. And super pumped that uh, George and Jason are going to be repping Sleeper Wire with us at the NFFC in Dallas this summer. It's going to be awesome. Is there- yeah, absolutely. I just I love those guys so much. They're just so amazing. Huge part of the why the blitz happened this year and how it was happening. So very excited. I can't wait to go see these guys in person too. Yeah, and they they talk fantasy football, but they also talk about life. It's not just I a break love that about grind them. from you know the grind of work, but it's a break from the grind of listening to fantasy football shows and getting the same information from different people. Hopefully we give you a little bit of a different perspective than some, but it's, it's a break from that as well. Yeah. I, I completely love that about them, that they do not care about what the topic is. They will address it. They will touch it. Um, and whether you agree with them or not, they, they will have opinions on It's a break from the grind of football. Yeah. It, it's a great show. Sure. It's if you guys don't tune in, Go ahead and add them to your podcast listens. They're amazing. They put out shows at least once a month, um, and they're on the Sleeper Wire show as well as as guest hosts. No, they, they've been doing as it every host. week. Yeah, not even as guest hosts, as hosts. Yeah, yeah they're <laughs> no longer guest hosts. You guys yeah, are yeah. a part of the team. Yep. You know that. Dynasty Wire with Draft Genius, you are a part of the team. You know that. We're glad to have you guys. And that is going to wrap it up. Everybody, please follow us on Twitter at Sleeper Wire Show. You can follow us individually. Dirty Jobs is on Twitter at Dirty Jobs 21. Hoos is Hoos the Prophet. And I am Prof underscore Chris SW. You can also find us on the Sleeper app at Dirty Jobs, Prophet Hoos and Professor Chris. Follow us on Facebook. You can find us on there, the Sleeper Wire Fantasy Football Club. No, it is not the Sleeper Wire group. Sleeper Wire Fantasy Football Club. And then Instagram as well. Dirty underscore jobs underscore Mike. Who's the Prophet and Professor Chris SW. Mike Hoos, thank you so much for joining me this week. Everybody else, thanks for listening. And we will catch you next time. Peace.